Welcome back to our creative uh, video series. Uh, my name is Loretta Hayes and I am from Hayes Sewing Machine Company in Wilmington, Delaware. And so today we are going to do another back to basics video. And so what we're going to show you is how to do uh, basic free motion. Uh, if it's been a while since you've done free motion or maybe you've looked at it in books and in videos and thought, ah, I'm not sure I want to do that on my, my pretty quilt. Um, we're going to give you some tips and tricks on how to be successful with free motion quilting. Uh, some of it is just technique and some of it are the little gadgets and gadgets that are available that make free motion easier. So we're going to start out with the absolute basics of what you need for free motion. And the absolute basic that you need for free motion is a free motion presser foot to go on your machine. Free motion is done generally with just a straight stitch, so you do not have to have a really exotic machine to do free motion. Uh, you know, the most basic sewing machine is going to do that for you. But you do need to have a free motion foot. And the reason for that is when you put the foot on and the foot uh, is lowered like you're placing it on the fabric, a free motion foot is going to stop about an eighth of an inch short of the material. And that allows us to maneuver our fabric underneath the foot. If you try this with your regular presser foot, obviously that foot is going to squash down on the fabric and not allow you any free motion. So let's show you some possibilities. Pam, do you want to just kind of bring the camera down? So the most basic free motion feet uh, are just the metal ones that have a circle in them. Uh, oftentimes, if you have an older machine and you're looking in your instruction book as to the accessories that came with your machine, if it refers to a darning foot, uh, then you have a free motion foot already. However, you'll see that this is closed. There are so many other great options for free motion that give you better visibility. So this is foot number 24 on the Berninas, and you will notice that it is open in the front. Uh, this is a baby lock foot, uh, foot O, and you can see it is also open in the front. So they may look slightly different, um, but they have that open visibility. You can see right to the needle, which makes it much easier to do your uh, free motion. The other possibility uh, for free motion feet for great visibility is uh, doing one that is clear. So you can see this one here is a clear one. It's kind of an, an oval shape, uh, so there's not a lot of foot in front of the needle. This one here is also a, a clear foot. And when you're working with these kind of saucery type clear feet, um, they are wonderful if you're doing a higher loft bat. There's a little bit more foot to squish the batting down and it makes it so much easier for you to float on top of your fabric. They are also fabulous if you are doing uh, designs on a quilt that maybe is like an eight point star where you have a lot of seams coming into a center point. So these, they will go and flow up over the point uh, rather than something like this will sometimes come to the point and kind of get hooked up on the edge of it. So that is the absolute basics of what you need for free motion. I am going to start my day here using the foot number 24. It is literally my favorite free motion foot. All right, so let's go ahead and come over to the machine and let's get set up on the machine. So if we're just doing the bare bones basic, we're going to go ahead, we're going to put our presser foot on. And then the second thing that we absolutely need to do is we need to take care of our feed dogs. Now on many machines, many, many machines, you can drop the feed dogs. And on this particular Bernina, there is a button on the end of the sewing machine. When I press that button, those feed dogs drop underneath the plate. Uh, if you have a machine that doesn't drop the feed dogs, 
that does not negate you doing free motion. Um, what I would do in that situation is I would take my stitch length and I would put it to zero. And that way the feed dog might be hopping up and down, but it's not stroking and pulling the fabric backwards or forwards, which makes it much easier to do. Oftentimes on a machine that has no dropping of feed dogs, they give you a little plastic piece that goes into your plate. Um, I tend not to use that. Uh, I find that it creates a little bump and it kind of holds up on my um, fabric. So instead of doing that, just zero out your stitch length. Um, the feed dogs will just bounce up and down harmlessly uh, and you'll be able to maneuver your fabric. So those two are the most critical things on free motion. Things that are going to make your life easier. The first thing is if your machine has the possibility of changing the needle plate. So on this machine here, I can press down on my um, plate. I can pull the plate out and you'll see that the plate has a zigzag slot. So one of the problems with a zigzag slot uh, in free motion is when you're moving your fabric front to back, there's a lot of control because the front of the and the back of the plate are very close to your bobbin thread. But when you move side to side, then you have this long slot and the thread will move backwards and forwards. So if it is a possibility, if you can get a single hole plate, you'll see this is the same exact plate, same feed dog slots, but instead of this long oval, I've got a single hole. And that single hole will kind of crisp up the back of your quilt. Uh, you'll just get a better stitch quality with it. So I'm going to go ahead and install that uh, onto my machine. And I'm going to say that probably about, oh, 50% of machines have that as a possibility. So if it's not a possibility on your machine, still, you can still free motion. Uh, but if it is a possibility, prettier stitches are always a nice thing. So we've installed our needle plate. The next gadget and gadget that I absolutely love is something that they call a sew slip. And a sew slip is a Teflon sheet. You'll see there's a hole cut out of the center of it. And on one side of it, it is slick. On the other side, when you put your hand over it, it's tacky. And so what you do is you place the tacky side facing down. We line the hole up where the thread is going to go through on my plate. And I just pet the sew slip down and it will attach to the machine. So it, I'm in a cabinet, so it's attaching kind of to my cabinet surface. But if you have a tray table, it will attach to the tray table. Don't worry if it falls off the edge of the tray table. It's still going to give you that slick surface right on that top edge. And so what this does is, particularly if you're quilting a larger quilt, it slicks up the surface and makes the free motion so much easier to do. All right, so I've installed the, the single hole plate. I've installed the sew slip. Uh, and by the way, the sew slip on occasion, that tacky side will get kind of linty because we're quilters and we do um, free motion, you know, we do cotton things and it gets kind of linty. Um, if that's the case, if it gets so linty that it doesn't stick down, not a crisis, run over to the sink, wash it, you know, just put, put it under water, maybe add a little bit of soap to it, and then take it out and paper uh, towel dry it, and then all of a sudden it's tacky again. So the adhesive on the back is not, it's more like a shelf liner uh, as opposed to like scotch tape where if you get it wet, it's not going to stick anymore. All right. Now I need to get my bobbin thread up to the top, so we're going to turn the flywheel. We're going to pull our bobbin thread up. I'm going to close up my door and we are ready to go. So at this point, we're going to tuck our fabric underneath the, the needle. We're going to take our top thread 
and we're going to send our needle down through the fabric and back up one stitch. At that point, I'm going to take my top thread that I was holding on and I'm going to pull hard and you will see a loop of your bobbin thread. And you're going to keep pulling that loop until you have both ends on top of the fabric. You want to pull that uh, bobbin thread up because if we leave it underneath, you know it's going to get into trouble. Um, so if we have both of them on the top, we can kind of anchor it and uh, we can hold on to them so they don't get what I refer to as a thread burp or thread throw up on the back of our quilt. Not what we're looking for. So we're going to come in, we're going to kind of tuck this underneath. This is one of the nice things about the, the open toe foot. And I'm going to take one or two stitches and just do kind of a little hitch back and forth. That's going to attach my threads on. Now, when you are doing the threads, when we're, we're looking at our threads, if you're doing a quilt for, you know, the kids to wrap up in front of in the TV, um, then I would just go ahead and clip this thread. If you are doing something where you are going to get this quilt, this quilt is going to be judged, you're going to put it into a quilt show, then I would leave these tails long and after I've quilted the quilt and I have it off the machine, I would then take and uh, put this on a hand needle and I would scooch my hand needle in the batting area, clip my thread, and bury that thread into the, to the quilt. But for demonstration purposes, definitely, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to cut that. And I trim it. I don't get it perfectly trimmed. I'm about maybe a half an inch from the edge. I'm just trying to get it so that I don't have uh, a large tail that's going to get in the way. Now, the rules of uh, free motion are this. You want to have one hand at 9 o'clock and one hand at 3 o'clock. And we want to move our hands together to create the designs. Where we get into trouble is when we have the hands this way and we start to drive the fabric. That will make it very difficult to get pretty looking stitches and very difficult to get like a smooth looking loop. So one hand at nine o'clock, one hand at three o'clock, and the hands are going to move together. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start our machine and we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a loop. So you'll see my hands are going to gather. If I need to shift, I can move my hands. You can always stop. If your machine has needle stop down capability where you can press a button and the needle will go into the fabric, oh, such a great thing. So we'll take off and now we'll go the opposite direction and we can go ahead and do very simple designs. This is called a loop-de-loo uh, and you'll notice that I'm not going Mach 2 with my hair on fire. I think sometimes that's what uh, frightens people about free motion is oftentimes you, you hear that you're supposed to be going so, so fast and you're making these decisions on the fly and you know, you're, you're like, oh, I, I, can't, I can't think that fast. So try and keep the machine uh, at a kind of medium speed and your hands running at a medium speed. Now, there will get to be a point when you're free motioning that your hands will no longer grip the fabric. I find for myself about maybe 15 minutes in, it's almost like I don't have enough oil in my hands. Um, and so I start doing what I refer to as the death grip, where you grab a hold of the quilt and you're doing this. And this is not enjoyable free motion. Remember, quilting is supposed to be fun. So there are other gadgets and gadgets to help us with that. You can do quilting gloves, and quilting gloves are really cool. Uh, they're cotton gloves, <coughs> and they have rubber tips at the end of them. And so when you put the, the glove on, 
the little rubber tips will help you grab a hold of the fabric. So very, very nice, makes it easier for you to grab a hold of your material. And they come in different sizes, so like they do an extra small, a medium, a large, and an extra large. Um, on the back of the package, they make it so that you can put your hand there uh, so you can kind of get an idea of what size uh, glove is going to work well for you. So that's been around for quite some time. The next little gadget and gadget is what they refer to as spots. Um, they're sweet spots. They're done by a uh, handy quilter. You can see the HQ on them. And they have a little kind of tacky pad on the bottom. Sweet spots have only been available for a couple of years and they are fast becoming my favorite tool for grabbing a hold of the quilt. Because what's nice about them is they're just really an extension of my hands so I can go along and I can work my way. And you'll see it's very easy to, to maneuver your quilt. So those are the gadgets and gadgets that you need to go free motion. Um, at that point, you know, beyond this point, uh, it's really just a case of practicing. So these two books are wonderful books if you need some ideas for free motion. So this one here, I don't know how many printings this book has had, but it is a fabulous book if you're brand new to free motion. It also uh, has wonderful um, walking foot patterns in it as well. So, talks about batting. Okay, so it, <laughs> Pam says it talks about batting as well. Okay, um, so when you're looking in here, it will give you exercises uh, so that you can practice your free motion patterns. Now, if you've done a little free motion and think, oh, I need a little bit of help for ideas, my favorite free motion book is done by Amanda Murphy. And this one is the Free Motion Quilting Idea Book. And when you go into this one, it is all about the ideas. So if we're doing a half square triangle, uh, you can see that she's gonna recommend, here's what the block it looks like, maybe a simple uh, free motion design in our um, lighter version, and then maybe just an up and down design for the fill in. But if you want to do something a little bit more involved, we'll come in, we can do some kind of loops, and then we could do some fill in between. Uh, we could do some loop-de-loops just like I was doing. <clears throat> and then little baby loop-de-loops coming along in here. We could do some feathery type designs. We could do some circles. We could do some simple echoes coming along if we're doing half square triangles and we're putting them together and we're creating a chevron. Uh, things that we could do in between the chevron pieces. And you can see the idea she takes uh, a particular type of block and then gives you multiple ideas. So some of them are um, fairly complicated. Some of them are super, super easy. Uh, and so you can just pick the design at the skill level that you are. So that is Amanda Murphy's Free Motion Quilting Idea Book. It's kind of blue in the, in, on the cover. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, when you are doing simple designs. So one of the most popular designs for Free Motion, it's one that um, people seem to aspire to it, uh, is stippling. And stippling is like puzzle pieces. Your lines don't cross. Um, and so one of the things that is hard about stippling is it's supposed to look random, um, but you're making kind of decisions on the fly, and so oftentimes it doesn't show up as random. So here's a couple of tips. So here's the problem. Um, you know, we're going along and we're gonna do stippling, and so we're going, this is the, one of the more common issues that I see. So my students will say, I don't like my stippling because it looks like I did it in rows. And so the answer to that is probably because we did it in rows. So here's the trick for stippling. 
I take, and in my brain, I count to four. So everybody's qualified to do this. And so I go up, down, one, two, side, side, three, four. Up, down, one, two, side, side, three, four. And that will get rid of you doing things in the rows. So we're gonna come along, we're gonna go up, down, then side, side, then up, down, then side, side. And if you put an extra loop in there, it's a random design, even better. So once again, up, down, then side, side, up, down, then side, side. And that rhythm of counting it off in your brain, it's counterintuitive, right? You know, because it's a random design, we're counting it out. But you will get so much better results when you are doing something like that. Um, it just makes it easier. You know what direction you should be going. You don't end up with all up downs or all side sides um, to create that pattern. Now, you can also do things where they are doing up downs only. So one of the patterns I just showed you in the book, uh, she did a fill where she just went <coughs> and did just up and downs. So she filled in the tri half square triangle, going up and down. And so you could do a fill that way. We can do that same fill, <coughs> but we can do it sideways. And if you alternate, that creates a pattern. That is a great background fill. So I would come up here and then start doing the side side. So you can see if you want to do a little bit more structured free motion, you could do designs like that. If you are a doodler at heart, if you, you know, if there's a piece of paper and a pen in your hand and you're scribbling around and making little flowers and that kind of thing, then you are going to be an awesome free motioner. Um, if you're not a doodler or at heart, then what you want to do is kind of block off the area and maybe decide ahead of time what you want to do. Um, and that's where the idea of books is really, really helpful. You will also find that you have a drift when you do free motion. So for me, I'm always more comfortable free motioning from left to right. Um, it just, there's a flow there that when I go from right to left, it's not quite the same. So when you're doing your free motion, you may want to go with that flow. You might want to start on the left-hand side of your quilt and kind of work your way across. When I get to the other side, I have two choices, right? I can either force myself to go back, and that's perfectly okay. Sometimes you're kind of stuck doing that. But it could also be more fun for us if we come in and we cut the thread and jump back on the left-hand side of the quilt and go with our flow. One of the things that you might want to do if you're doing that is if I'm doing, say, rows of stippling, remember, we don't, we don't want it to look like we did rows. So we'll tack back on here. is when we're stitching, Stitching across, I didn't leave it straight. 
I kind of left myself little hills and valleys to, to go into. So when I then take and attach my next one, so let's say we went all the way across the quilt. Now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna tack on over here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do my stippling here, but I'm gonna go up into that little cavity that I left. Okay, so let's cut that and let you see. So because I left that cavity when I came back and went this direction, it doesn't look like I did it in rows. And I promise you, no one is ever going to be counting how many times you tack on and tack off. So uh, if you feel like you need to, because you don't, you're going against your flow, uh, cut off and then go back into another section. And that's also true, uh, oftentimes I find beginners are afraid that, oh, I'm gonna paint myself into a corner. What should I do then? So if that's the case, then just tack off, cut your thread, and then go ahead and tack back onto another section. Uh, the, on a plain piece of fabric, it's much harder to hide the tack offs and tack ons. Um, but in a quilt, it's super easy because you've got all those little seams that you can just uh, hide your little tack on and tack off some. So I hope this gives you some ideas for basics of free motion. The first thing is to get your machine set up. So the absolute bare bones is you got to have free motion and you know how to do something with the feed dogs. Either drop them or zero out your stitch length. Things that are going to make things easier to do, the sew slip is going to slick it up, the straight stitch plate is going to give you a little bit better stitch quality, and then either the gloves or the sweet spots are going to help you move your fabric easily without the death grip. And then when you're working with the machine, make sure that you're not going Mach 2 with your hair on fire. You'll find that sweet spot of speed. Some people it's a little bit slower, some people it's a little bit faster, but everybody has their own sweet spot. Now, the last thing I wanna leave you with is you've come to your machine, you've got your machine set up, you are ready to roll, okay? First thing, you do not want to be doing this on your Baltimore album uh, quilt that you just uh, spent six years hand appliquing. All right, you want to take some scraps, uh, maybe things that you've cut off the edge of your quilt, maybe a panel, um, you know, the, the cute kids panels uh, for a baby quilt. You could layer up that and then go ahead and play with your free motion on that. Low pressure quilts for your first ones. Maybe that quilt top that you have in your stash that you thought, you know, if I had known that, I would have changed that color. You know, the one that you're not emotionally attached to, that's the one you practice on, okay? That's your first thing. The second thing is that when you get started, whether you free motion, I free motion probably a couple of times a week, but if you've never free motioned or it's been a long time, you need to warm up. So taking swatches like this and playing with them, moving your fabric up and down, side to side, doing loop-de-loos, all of those kinds of things, um, and practicing for maybe 10, possibly 15 minutes, maybe on the outside. What you're gonna find is at five minutes, you're gonna feel really spastic. Okay, and if you feel spastic, you're doing it right because everybody feels spastic when they first start out. 
once you get like about 10 minutes of practicing, all of a sudden you start to notice like, oh, my curves are curvier. They're not, they don't have little uh, square corners to them. So you kind of practice 10 or 15 minutes, you literally hit your flow. You're kind of getting your speed on. You, you feel like, oh, this is, this is comfortable to do. Then you jump on your project. And like I said, low pressure projects to start with. So have fun free motioning. Remember that no one ever graduates from free motion quilting school. When I start a new pattern that I've not done before, I have to break out the, the fabrics to, to practice it. I play with it. I often take and draw my pattern. So I'll take my, uh, like an artist sketchbook and I will just put my pencil to it and I will trace the pattern. And I'll just sit in front of the TV and watch an old movie and just do like five or six pages of the, the design again and again. And then when I come down, come to the machine, I have that kind of muscle memory and it makes it much easier for me to do. So have fun. The next creative video is going to be Pam and she is going to show you a new um, three yard quilt. It's called Easy Street. She's, she's mouthing it to me. <laughs> so we'll see you next time.